11 a.m. item 6.7. A, consideration of resolution authorizing the purchase of real property located at 5245 3rd Street, Kelseyville, California, 95451 for the continued purpose of a Kelseyville Senior and Event Center, I'm sorry, purchase, it says per, it's supposed to be purchase. And B, consideration of re real property purchase and sale Agreement contingent upon approval of the general plan conformity report and C, consideration of lease agreement between the County of Lake and Kelseyville Senior Center, Inc. and authorize the chair to sign. And we have Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter. Good afternoon, board. I was checking the time to see what time it was. Um, Stephen Carter, Assistant County Administrative Officer. So with this item, I wanted to start actually with a memo fix in the first line. Um, doesn't matter how many times you look at it. Unfortunately, it does say county owned facility. That is not the case yet. That's the whole point of this item. So I do apologize for that. Um, I did want to start with a little bit of a background before we even get into the A, B, or C. Because so, I know that there's some mixed signals out there. So in 2001, 2002, 200000 of general fund was granted to Kelseyville Seniors, Inc. for that organization to purchase the property. And there's a short form deed of trust and security agreement so that literally states county grants. So we just basically were the funder in that purchase and it was put under their name and their responsibility. And in that same time period, there was a $150,000 federal earmark from Congressman Thompson and that was to remodel the property at the time. Now, fast forward to 2021, the ARPA committee met in September and the project was brought up and approved by the committee for $700,000 recommended. The, uh, the ARPA committee recommended to bring it to the board and the board has approved that. And later on, on August 9th, your board appointed, um, well, I don't wanna quite go there yet. At that same time of the approval for the 700,000, I did wanna make sure I um, also stated that all of the other senior centers in the county also received 50,000 um, allocation from ARPA as well. So it wasn't single out just Kelseyville. And then August 9th, 2022 board meeting, your, your board appointed Susan Parker and myself as negotiation team. And then on August 19th, 2023, your board increased the ARPA budgeted amount for Kelseyville Seniors Inc. project from 700 to $800,000 and that was approved. Now, <clears throat> before I get into the appraisal and everything else, I do want to talk about the actual item A, which is the resolution authorizing the purchase of the real property located at 5245 Third Street, Kelseville, California, 95451 for the continued purpose of a Kelseville Senior and Event Center. So this is the initial resolution that would need to be approved by your board that allows all of the subsequent actions to happen. Um, one of the key pieces of this resolution that I'd like to draw out is that the last whereas, Lake County will continue to provide opportunities for senior services in the Kelseyville area. That's specifically put in there over concerns of once the property is under county ownership that we could pull out, do something different. That is one of the assurances that I'll talk about more later in, in the other agreements of the fact that the county's intention is to provide senior services in this area. So with the purchase agreement, the uh, related to that, the appraisal came in in February 22nd, 2022 of 320,000. The negotiated purchase price was 117,795. And the way that that number was derived was 320,000 appraisal minus the 200,000 um, 
security agreement with the county that needs to be satisfied, bringing it down to 120,000. And then the 2,205 was removed for county costs date, um, county cost to date, which was appraisal inspections and um, ADA compliance inspections. Um, and then the lease and purchase agreement, they've already been signed by, Kels I, I want to call them KSI because that's what the short for them, has been signed by KSI and the county council. And something that is different on this board item versus when we brought it forward in November is when you're looking at, um, I believe it's B, where it says pending um, the general fund conformity report, that has occurred. And on December 12th, the Planning Commission did approve the um, general plan conformity for GPC 2305, which is for the purchase of the, the KSI property. Um, I would like to bring out some specifics in the agreement, which in, in lease that are slightly different than normal, and it's more again towards um, Kelsville Senior Seniors Inc.'s request. Um, the purchase, the purchase. Well, the, this one isn't exactly. KSI's request, this is your board's request. The purchase amount will be placed into a special trust fund held by the county treasury. A separate resolution will come forward in the next few weeks, most likely mid-January considering holidays, that would create um, this new trust fund. And I've talked to the auditors, auditor herself, I won't even say the auditor's office. That is no problem and she agrees with what the admin office thought where your board should sign that, but KSI's board should also appro approve um, sign, which we would also, we would get their signature first so that when this fund is created, we're all on the same page. And within that resolution, we can set down ground rules on being, it would go, the purchases would come through administration and then sent on for um, to the auditor's office to be paid, but to, to make sure it's senior center related activities, not anything else. And then an, one of the special pieces of the lease is there's a section under where the renewal happens. The parties agree to reasonably meet and confer to enter into a new lease at least 60 days prior to the termination date of in 2033, and the county shall initiate the meet and confer. So that's important because it provides assurance to KSI and the, the public in Kelseyville that we aren't just gonna wait until the end of the lease and do something else. The county is responsible for initiating it at least 60 days ahead and doing the meet and confer in good faith. Um, the next steps. So the resolution to create the trust fund signed by KSI and your board will come forward and then everything related to potential remodeling of the building. So Lars sent me an email that isn't specific to this project, but once the lease agreement is signed and it's gone and it becomes our property, um, there needs to be programming, schematic design, design development, construction documents, all the normal things for construction and remodel um, and bidding and all of, we have to be under contract before the end of, before December 31st of 2024, we need to be under the construction contract because that's the ARPA requirement. And then the project has to be completed no later than December 31st of 2026, because that's the last date you can use ARPA funding for this. And I believe I'm ready for questions if there are any. Any questions? Supervisor Spatier. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the history as well, because I agree. I think there's been some uh, contradictory information, but I'm glad that we can clear that up. Um, appreciate the way that the lease is done. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the future uh, kind of policy on drawdown of the funding that will be put in a special fund or trust. Uh, I, I do have a question about other uses of the building uh, will this be 
um, like our other buildings where you can lease the building for like a event. I just don't, I don't see that written anywhere that. Um, it's in the lease. Is that? It, it, it is in the lease, yeah. but. Is that a separate kind of thing that we just get to do with our buildings? Exhibit E. Okay. But before we get to exhibit E, um, when we lease back the property to KSI, they're still also allowed to do their event center part piece of their business because that's what draws in all the revenue for them. So that needs to be just as much considered as anything else. Um, but in Exhibit E, that's where any emergency declared by the County Board of Supervisors, the County will set hours and staffing. And, and it also says that, uh, you know, the Senior Center event and Event Center, the hours of operation, the County Board for posting agendas, et cetera. So the plan is also, there's CRC funding coming down, Community Resource Center, Resiliency Center. Awesome. Hope we haven't gotten the grant yet. No, but that's something that this building in a de declared disaster from the county. And, and so I'm looking, and thank you, I'm looking at the facility use policy on availability, just trying to understand why it says all uses must conclude by 12 p.m. That was just part of standard agreements, I guess not. Because it says 2 AM. use may not exceed an eight hour period, but then it says all uses must conclude. But does that mean you're starting at 2 AM and you can't go further than 12 PM? Is it 12 PM the next day? Like I'm just not quite certain what 12 PM stands for. I would think midnight that night, but. Wouldn't that be 12 AM? Yeah, it would be. Does it say PM? Yeah. And the exhibits can be adjusted at any point in time. Yeah. Which exhibit are, are you referring to? Uh, it's the facility use policy. Exhibit A. Sorry. Okay, like six pages back. Sorry. Okay easily can make that change. Um, my next one is, and, and sorry if I didn't catch it in there, does Kelseyville Seniors Inc. have a facility use access past their normal operations if they're doing like a fundraiser? Do they get a uh, free access for one to two fundraisers a year or do they go through the same policy that anyone else that wants to use the facility would have to go through? KSI, yeah. they have full control of the building. Okay, just wanted to make sure that- We uh, only take control. I thought once they were done with their senior center stuff that anything else would be additional. No, it, it's essence letting them can do exactly what they're doing now with the exception of if there's county declared emergencies, et cetera, so staffing. Well, they have the ability to lease out their space, Correct. sublease it out if they want to, if it works. Okay. but. It doesn't mean that their time of use stops. Okay. Supervisor Green. Yeah, just a quick housekeeping item. <clears throat> I noticed some inconsistency in the staff report and the resolution and some of the CDD documents. Uh, I believe the correct name would be Kelseyville Seniors, plural, Inc. Um, I, I see right. some references to senior uh, singular in the planning docs and in the staff report, I see Kelseyville Senior Center, Inc. So I just want to make sure we uh, nail down that name before we execute the documents and be consistent. Thank you. It's Kelseyville Seniors, Inc. Only. Okay. Do we have any public comment? Anyone in the chambers or the Zoom room? We have a hand up, Elizabeth Larson can go ahead and unmute and you'll get your three minutes will start. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, just a couple questions and I'll ask them and I can also send these to staff in writing if necessary, but um, I'm, I'm curious about, and so few county organizations get hundreds of thousands of dollars of assistance from the county much, much, once, much less twice. So I'm kind of wondering why this group and why now especially since Chair Paiska mentioned that there are a lot of needs in the county. And so I wonder why this one is being prioritized the way it is. Um, I'm curious if people, so that's number one. 
number two is it was mentioned previously that people come from Cobb to use this senior center. And I'm curious if that's been actually um, studied and if you really know who comes from where. Um, and I, so that's another question. And still a, another is for close to a million dollars, why not choose another location that's larger and more suited for this use? I mean, this, this facility has essentially no parking. It's on a tiny lot. And I think it's like 2,500 square feet. It's just not very big for the uses for a senior center, much less a CRC. Um, and so, and I also am curious, is it the county's goal to own all senior centers? Um, you don't now, but this is, it seems like this is some sort of direction. And over the past several years, the county has sell, sold off a lot of properties, especially on the North Shore. And earlier this year, during the discussion about the Lake County Rodeo using county properties, Supervisor Sabatier talked about wanting to review other county holdings and potential, potentially sell more of them. So is this purchase signaling a change in policy direction or do you even have a policy? And those are my questions, thank you. I think we can get to some of these. Do you wanna start, Stephen, or, okay. So the reason this project was um, vetted and chosen by the ARPA committee then brought to the board was because the senior center, Kelseyville Senior Centers Inc. has been struggling to maintain an aging building um, that has a lot of needs. And we were very uh, careful when we were picking, choosing ARPA projects, they had to, they had to align with the guidelines. And this is one of the projects that uh, aligns with the guidelines. Uh, so we wanted to support the senior centers and this is one of the projects that we chose to do that, um, to allow this organization to focus on providing uh, services to seniors. And um, the Cobb visitors, that would be information from the senior center itself. We don't, I don't have that today, but um, you did mention that you're gonna be providing these questions and we can work to get them answered to you um, by staff. Is there anything else you wanna add, Stephen? No, a lot of the information would require some research. Okay, yeah. Um, we do have um, a facility in Middletown that this is going to sort of mirror and be a smaller version of, but this uh, was an investment that we wanted to make in the town of Kelseyville and for the, the, the community and the senior center and the seniors. Supervisor Spatier. And since it was brought up on something that I stated, uh, I think we have some vacant land, especially when it's around our treatment plants. I think that there may have been a good purpose and reason to isolate those uh, facilities, but at the same time, looking at unused uh, land or possibly if we have unused facilities, which we, I think we have very few that I can think of, uh, that yes, we should be looking at that, but not, uh, I, part of our Vision 2028, while it's rather vague, does say to provide support for our seniors and we need to ensure, especially as we've seen from the AAA reports, the increase of seniors that we anticipate to have in our population, uh, that there's longevity and good support in those senior services that are being provided. Personally, I really like the Middletown area and the Clear Lake area in the fact that it's a uh, partnership between the local jurisdiction and a nonprofit in order to make sure to work together to provide those services. Uh, and I would not mind looking at doing that in other places if that was the case. Uh, and I think this is a good opportunity to make sure that there's longevity, uh, there's seniors in the area that would prefer to see that keep going rather than slowly disappear. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to jump in. Uh, and specifically the way that the sale has gone uh, at this moment outside of the repairs, uh, we're literally looking at a $60,000, $65,000 difference in comparison to what we gave other uh, senior centers because we gave each one of them 50. Here we're getting our 200 back and when it's 117 or whatever the amount specific is, when you take out the 50, that's the difference that we're looking at in the way that we're treating that senior center. Except for the renovation costs. Outside of outside, the repairs. Yeah. Correct. And this is an old building like we talked about. You know, 
I would really hope that we would prioritize having ADA bathrooms for our seniors. There's a lot of issues with this building. We really want to invest in this facility so it will benefit them um, for the decades to come. And off use, this will be a, a wonderful place for the community to gather and meet. Um, we talked about scouts using it, different organizations. Um, this is really going to benefit the community, and I'm, I'm happy that we can deliver this investment. One more question, Supervisor Green? Yeah, so I'm just looking at the agreement. So in general terms, uh, although the ARPA money is going to cover some deferred maintenance and hopefully get it in a state of uh, betterness under the terms of the contract, they would be responsible basically for building maintenance uh, from here on out. So, and then that has been a struggle in years past. So although they'll get an improved facility thanks to the ARPA funds, the way this is uh, proposed to be contracted right now, they're still going to be on the hook for the building maintenance, right? No, I think it's general It's more like a triple net lease. It's still our building, so roof, all of that would still be us. A, a lessee, uh, windows, walls, plumbing, electrical, heating, and cooling, and I'm only asking that because I have a gently used juvenile hall that is creating a whole bunch of expenses on this county. Uh, so if the lessee is going to be under Clause 7, Clause 7 on page 2, if they're going to be on the hook for maintenance and repairs, uh, we better lock down whatever ARPA can and can't do to, to fluff that building up. But the way I'm reading it, um, they're going to be on the hook to uh, continue to maintain the property. And that's been a struggle that has led us to the sale proposal. The, 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 so, way, the way that I read it is not that. I mean, it I mean, says in a safe and sanitary condition, as in it will be clean, it will not be damaged. Um, that's just not the way that I read it, uh, and maybe there needs to be some clarification. That's the way I interpret it. That's why I'm um, waiting for Lloyd. <laughs> to, the to the extent that it makes uh, specific references, it does re reference uh, keeping in a safe and sanitary condition, interior, exterior walls, plumbing, electrical, heating, and cooling systems and appliances. Uh, so th that's where it gets into the specific of um, the maintenance obligations imposed on the lessee as it's drafted now. Uh, your board has the option of further clarifying it. Uh, the same provision also imposes the obligation on the lessor to, uh, to maintain the common area, grounds, parking lot, uh, roof and the building structural integrity. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Anybody want to? I'll offer the resolution. Did we already? We did public comment. Yes. Yes. Supervisor Simon? Yes. Supervisor Sabatier? Aye. Supervisor Crandall? Aye. Supervisor Green? Aye. And Supervisor Paiska? Yes. Madam Chair, I move to approve real property purchase and sale agreement contingent upon approval of the general plan conformity report. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Madam. Opposed? Okay. Sorry. Motion passes. Madam Chair, I move to approve lease agreement between the County of Lake and Kelseyville Seniors, Inc and authorize the chair to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Hey, thank you. This has been a, this has been a, a long, a big project, so I really appreciate admin for, um, for delivering this today. And again, very excited for this investment in the community of Kelseyville for people of all ages. Okay.